Durham Partners in Project Green is a program provided by Durham Sustainability that works with our local businesses to help them achieve cost savings through emission and impact reduction. In addition, we host events such as today's webcast to give our local businesses information on the latest developments in the environmental movement and the technologies that are available that could impact your bottom line. If you have any questions throughout this webcast, please feel free to use the chat feature and we will open it up for questions at the end. In addition, we're also recording this webcast so you will have access to the replay at the end of the day today. We have a fantastic speaker with us today, David Katz of Magnetite Canada. After 27 years of corporate project experience at Bechtel Engineering, Johnson & Johnson and Ontario Hydro, David established Sustainable Resources Management in 1993. He currently consults on energy management, building automation and smart grid opportunities and is a member of a number of energy related associations and the Ontario Smart Grid Forum's Corporate Partners Committee. He is also working with Magnetite Canada to develop the business opportunities and demonstrate the energy and GHG reductions for this innovative product. Over to you, David. I think we're going to, uh, okay, I'm hitting the next slide. So uh, the purpose of the webinar is to introduce you to the various options that improve, uh, in this case, the building envelope, but we're focusing on windows where the greatest heat loss is uh, um, occurring. Uh, and the reason is we like to see through the window. So as noted here in the agenda, the slides have, in many cases, some words because I'll be reviewing the report, I'll re be reviewing what CMHC and Intercan talk about windows. Uh, I'll also mention the environmental product description and declaration as we move to net zero and uh, lead ratings and BOMA best. And then I'll be talking about how we can model the impact of improving windows and walls and doors with RedScreen, the software available from Intercan. Uh, then I'll explain Magnetite and basically my experience with this product and, and its predecessors and happy to help uh, Magnetite Canada now. And then also about the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Program. We now have a Green Energy Act or the Green Fund uh, focusing on fossil reduction and of course electric utility savings because many Ontario buildings are electrically heated. And then as noted, there will be questions after, and uh, this will be recorded and the slides made available. We all like to look out windows. We have glass for the purposes of letting in natural light, of looking outside, and yet these things cost us energy. So there are trade-offs, whether it's a skylight, whether it's a atrium, or whether it's our windows or doors, glass doors. The Intercan people talk about what is fenestration, the glass that we use, that we threw, and these affect energy as noted here in the various ways. And these are the things that we are measuring um, when we talk about radiation through the glass or conduction through the materials like the frame or convection between the space and the leakage caused by uh, leaking, et cetera, or opening. And although windows um, let heat in to help us with some of our heating, uh, and that's why we sort of aim to the south and, and have passive heat, we also are air conditioning. And so there's a cost balance that we have to look at. And what are the window problems? Well, windows are basically low E, low R, and uh, low resistance. And so builders, when they build your home, whether it's a new condo, et cetera, they are just meeting the code and they are looking at the lowest first cost. They're not worried about what it is that you're going to pay to the energy bills previously. Now we have to have energy benchmarking and things like that. We may have to change. Also, uh, there's condensation. So because of our cold weather and the interiors that are hot and humid, we get ice on our windows, we get mold around the windows, and many of them aren't sealed. And so clearly we see examples of people who are 
uh, you know, near their windows and uh, freezing in their house, even if the heat's blasting. Every window assembly has separations, even a new window between the glass and the frame, etc. And so leakage is one of the key problems, and we'll touch on that shortly. What are some of the solutions? Well, uh, obviously you can replace your your existing windows with new windows. We we have the advertisements every day. Uh, we see people in the malls with the new windows, Energy Star windows. New windows work and Hopefully they'll work the way they're rated. But there are options that can do to save your existing window. And exterior storms are one of those. And people can put an exterior storm window on a single family home. That's easy to reach the window, even if it's the second floor, etc. But in high rise buildings, like some of the multi-res buildings and some of the social housing buildings, we can't go and, and, and uh, do uh, exterior storms. So interior storm panels using magnetic seals or adhesion, other adhesion methods uh, is one of the, uh, another solution. Uh, insulating blinds uh, can save energy. And so you can put blinds in front of your windows and you can have them metallic and they can reflect the heat back into your room. They're not transparent and they're not always open or closed when needed. And they do save, but they have drawbacks. And these are things that we'll discuss in the two studies that I'll be looking at shortly. And then window film. There was a big push to have window film. Ontario was worried about summer peak load, electric heating, uh, electric air conditioning in the summer. So window films and nanotechnologies do improve the solar heating coefficient and they lower air conditioning costs. But the trade-off is that they may not do anything or cause heating costs to go up because they're not addressing the same problem. Clearly, if you have leaks around your window and if you have uh, areas where you see that you can do weather stripping or caulking, you should seal your, your existing windows. And when you get a new window, hopefully it's installed properly and it's sealed and it's uh, the insulation is properly done right to the wall that it's attached to. Uh, what does CMHC say about windows? Well, they also noted that if you have a single pane window, and they did studies on many of these large multi-res, and they basically say if you have single pane windows, you should add a second layer, like the exterior uh, storm uh, or the interior panel. And so uh, both CMHC and Anarchan see this. The benefit of improving your windows to reduce your heating costs, to improve comfort, to eliminate moisture damage like mold, etc. Uh, Intercan does have on their website uh, a flyer uh, about all the different methods, which some of them I'll be discussing. And they do show you that 25% of your heat loss comes from your window. So I'm just showing you the front page of the Intercan report and uh, we'll go into the details. I'm now going to talk about a U.S. study that looked at the various options of evaluating the wind retrofit and replacement options uh, done by the preservation lab because they were looking at older buildings, uh, Cascadia, which is like a green building council. And they looked, as noted in this slide, multiple window options comparing the relative energy and multiple climate zones, five U.S. cities, uh, which you'll see are similar to ours. And the results show that a number of existing window retrofits come very close to energy saving to those of a high performance replacement window at a fraction of the cost. Here's a chart that shows roughly the energy saving. And in the interest of time, I'll just say that the big blue line, the highest one that saves the most, is a brand new window in these five cities, Portland, Boston, Chicago, uh, Atlanta, and Phoenix. So obviously the energy savings dependent on the weather. And then, you know, caulking and blinds are the lowest to the left. And then the green interior panel is saving about 23%. And then I think the, the next one is insulating cellular shades. And then the final thing is a window. However, the cost in those cities is significantly different. So here's the new windows going into this home that they modeled of up to $30,000 or more. And uh, doing all the windows with the other measures, as you see, uh, are much lower, whether it's shades or interior panels or the other options. And here's a chart that basically shows 
uh, that they looked at those measures, both good quality and bad quality, or you know the the average energy saving from the low and high efficiency uh, systems and HVAC. So there are considerable savings, and they're based on the on the measures. They're not perfect in every case. Everything's dependent on where you are, your orientation to the north, and uh, the wind, etc. The uh, Simulation took a single um, um, pane window, double hung single pane window, in this case looking at the U value, which is basically the inverse of the R value, the solar heat gain coefficient, and the air leakage of under a 50 uh, PSI, which is a, you know, a door, a lower door kind of test. And they saw the leakage as a tight uh, of, of 646 units and leaky of up to 1360. And so, um, this is the baseline to which they then looked at adding measures or in the case replacing a new uh, this window with a new window so each one of these all i've done is tried to capture the results of the better and you know the two options that they use you can see the reduction in uh, u value so it goes down that's better and the solar heat gain coefficient if impacted and then the leakage so as you see in item two, if you put weather stripping, you're not doing anything with the glass. You're not in, impacting the solar heat gain, but you are sealing it up. So now you're going to 156 from 646 or 812. So you're sealing the leaks. Very good, low cost, it does something. Exterior storm windows, the next, you see the two different kinds. Clearly uh, a new low E double pane exterior storm the U value drops from 70.77 to 0.21, and then there's solar heat gain coefficient because it has a low E film, so it works very well. And then they have a clear, uh, single clear uh, operable window that also improves by not as much. And clearly an exterior storm also improves and reduces leakage. Then we come to the interior, interior storm window. In this case, they're using glass or low E single pane glass or an operable internal storm. Uh, these are two examples of, of using glass or, or acrylic, depending on what you're trying to do. And these also still leak, but not as much. The insulating shades, uh, there's a, you know, a different U value, their, uh, their leakage, is not significantly different. Uh, it does reduce it a bit, and they show that insulating cellular shades do improve the the energy performance uh, because you now have a shade, but you're you know blocking your 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 visualization. Uh, then they put interior insulating shades with the exterior storms, and uh, again, it improves. Uh, the air leakage improves to some degree. Um, the, um, the single exterior storm and the double exterior storm are the things that are improving the glass performance. Weather stripping. So here you're getting a little bit better of the performance of the glass from 0.77 to 0.55. Uh, you're lowering the solar heat gain coefficient because film has that property. And it appears here your leakage is improved to some degree. And finally, to, re to reflect on a new high performance window, clearly you get uh, 0.77 down to 0.24. Uh, you have a coating probably, so you get better air conditioning. So clearly, as shown in previous slides, new windows save energy. And new windows, by being built new and not being warped, have some leakage, but not very much. The final portion of this study, as uh, summarized here, is upgrading windows are, um, can result in energy savings, even in all climate zones, climate zones. The various options are impacted by cost, by what you're trying to do. And clearly, uh, you are saving energy, and in case of fossil fuels, you're lowering the carbon footprint. But due to the complexity of upgrading windows, these options aren't always what's on first of mind. People say, oh, windows, it never pays back. 
let's do LED lights and let's get a new thermostat and let's get a new boiler or a new chiller or a new furnace. All those things are good, but your windows are losing heat day and night 24 seven. Many older homes a, um, uh, that people see are leaking. There are measures, some of those that are uh, being provided now by Enbridge, where if you, if you seal up bigger openings uh, and add insulation to your, to your building and upgrade your heating system, you're going to get savings and you're going to get an Im Im improvement. But if it's still, after all those measures, you still have single pane aluminum glass, you are going to still lose the heat from that area of your building envelope. Uh, the second study, which is a more complex, and I'll go quickly through the slides, but in the interest of time, it's to show you that it's not only one study. Numerous studies have shown that the various options on existing windows have impacts. So here, there's many more uh, simulations, uh, 12 climate zones. They looked at screens, they looked at awnings, uh, solar screens, so much broader um, number of options to improve the existing windows and the results are plotted here it's hard to see but i can tell you that the the dots that go up to the 20 percent or the greater savings are things like the uh, interior panel uh, like um, uh, solar shades and uh, i mean insulating shades there are actually some measures that are below the line that aren't saving anything awnings and things like that so these are significant simulations, and um, clearly uh, energy can be saved by improving your existing windows. Here is a summary of the energy savings, and you'll see all the various options with the Washington, Phoenix, and Minnesota weather. And clearly, if you look at numbers like 22 for a horizontal blind, I'm just looking at the top the corner, and then you have 61 for an interior panel and uh, film and some negative one. So this is a plot, this is a chart of the plot that we just saw that shows the various options and what they say. And uh, I think this one here is the second one. So when you add it to an existing window, you have to look at it. And so here an interior panel saves 22.6. And, uh, you know, cellular shades, 11.4 uh, in terms of uh, gigajoules. Uh, this is of uh, solar gain and again, and how the uh, energy or U factor in this case is improved. Interior panels, and again, we're looking at uh, this from a magnetite point of view. Uh, this is why we're addressing this uh, opportunity with acrylic interior panels, which we feel are significantly lower in cost and do perform. And so here's an example. Uh, again, there are four difficulties of, of interior panel that was studied by the U.S. Uh, DOE. And these are the various measures that they took, whether it's two uh, panes of interior panel or one, and clearly the, uh, the impact on energy saving. Summary of their study and uh, exterior attachments are generally more effective in cooling and uh, in north and our climate heating energy is, is uh, highly um, higher than, than cooling. Uh, in many cases we have electrically heated uh, apartments and we just open the windows or have window air conditioners. So clearly our focus is on heating and the, uh, and the interior uh, keeping the heat in and interior panels and exterior storms and cellular shades were most cost effective in these localities. I'm now gonna cover the environmental factors because in addition to the energy that the window uses, we have to make new windows and therefore reusing existing windows has advantages. And uh, keeping existing windows saves the energy that would be needed to create a new window. The mining of the metals, the glass production, the transportation to your house, to the factory, the manufacturing of the new window, etc., all have energy impacts. And this is what we're looking at when we talk about life cycle assessment. We are talking about the embodied energy from cradle to grave. 
So the production of replacement windows, as you see, it requires materials, generates CO2, creates hazards from mining, manufacturing, transport, as we, we know, that's a big area of loss of use of fuel. And then we have to dispose of things. And we are dumping windows into the landfill. So retrofit measures, no disrespect meant, every of the measures shown, whether it's caulking or an interior panel or, or uh, other shades, they are manufactured and they do impact as well, but significantly less energy goes into making a single acrylic panel and a little magnetic strip that goes around it, or a shade for that matter. Now, in Europe, there are environmental product declarations required to be in a green building, in a lead building, or a Brienne building. And so here I'm going to show you, uh, I found an Italian company that has an environmental product declaration. These are coming to Canada, CSA is working on this, where you have to show the embodied energy and the environmental impacts of your product. And so these people are selling their window aluminum profiles to, to high uh, efficient window manufacturer. And they've taken four of their aluminum profiles and they've listed the, uh, the weights, the, the materials. And as you see in the bottom of this chart, they show the CO2 equivalents. And these things show the environmental impact, both in terms of ozone, in terms of SO2, in terms of CO2 equivalent. And these are the environmental product declarations that are going to be coming to Lee and to Green Globe and to Bulma Best, because we're looking at things from a holistic point of view. The CAGBC and LEED and other programs now are now talking about new uh, zero, net zero, zero carbon buildings. They have a new carbon framework and clearly highly efficient buildings require um, making your own energy but using much less in order to be able to be a net zero building or a zero carbon building and uh, although there's a lot of new construction and and we're looking at making a green building standards more applicable uh, we have 99 percent or 95 percent of buildings are existing and they'll exist forever uh, or quite a long time so we're now going to be looking how do we make our existing building uh, deep retrofits with uh, recladding with with low carbon options the federal government right now is looking at all their federal buildings uh, and they're asking the consultants like us to study what is the energy saving what is the energy cost saving but also what is the greenhouse gas reductions and what are the deepest greenhouse gas reductions, irrespective of whether it's economic and a quick payback? So I'll uh, come up to what is Magnetite. We are one of the insulating panel uh, companies that's been around here for 35 years. We have them at Humber College. We have them at Hydro One Buildings in Thunder Bay. And uh, most recently, with the acquisition of uh, Magnetite Canada's rights for all of Canada, uh, Andre, the, uh, the owner, has, has spent a, a good deal of effort to take the existing older technology, improve it, get it tested in CSA lab. Get it tested in RC labs. Uh, CSA tested the air leakage and showed that there was zero leakage when you took an existing window and you put our magnetic seal right to the edge with the magnetic seal that doesn't allow the air to move uh, to get through and under a blower door test. So this is window with its leakage and keeping the interior completely sealed from that. As long as it's structurally sound and not leaking water and, 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 and things between our interior panel and the outside window. So clearly the outside window has to be structurally sound but as long as it's structurally sound and it doesn't have that leakage from, from uh, outside and it's not broken, then it can be improved significantly. And here is the results of the CSA test just to show you, uh, you know, when you go from uh, uh, 2.27 to 3.70 in terms of uh, uh, British thermal units, or you go from 2.47 down to 1.55 if you look at the, of the metric units. These things show the improvement when magnetite was added to, in this case, I think it's a double glazed window. Um, here's the leakage test. 
where you see the leakage is point uh, under 75 psi it's so small that it was barely measurable in terms of 0. 0.0001 liters per second infiltration so uh, clearly this is where we believe that we're taking existing windows and adding a very high value acrylic panel and adding a magnetic seal that allows it to be removed allows it to be easily installed but seals up the existing window and you can through it now we have the tools now with red screen uh, which is a renewable energy or energy efficiency screening technology software available from Intercan, uh, downloadable from their site and uh, available to be used one of their areas of measure is an individual measure like a building improvement building envelope improvement and in this slide you will to look at the building look at its orientation to north because it impacts northeast southwest measure the glass square footage of the sides of the windows where they're facing putting in in the base case the existing rating for that window whether it's from uh, uh, a specification originally or a drawing that we get from the building or our own measure of single glaze aluminum and then putting in the impact of improvement on the same area of square footage but improving as you see here the r value or u value you can choose either one of the measures and also looking at the solar heat gain coefficient change so if we add air conditioning which we do and then putting in the cost per square foot to show the economics before we even sell anything to anybody we want to show them what the payback is subject to toronto weather or oshawa weather or durham weather or weather around the world which red screen has and the second area just below the, the chart i showed you before and these are my screen captures of red screen it allows you to look at the ventilation and so here the base case was you know leaky existing window and there shows you a leakage of 174 liter per second i barely see this on the screen but and then we are saying our improvement is either tight or at least medium and when we do this it shows the additional energy saving that's impacted that will be both from the amount of the glass that we just did in the, in the above and also sealing up the building the uh, the leakage around the windows and clearly you can see the savings when we put in heating and air conditioning of you know 66 percent or of air conditioning or 27 percent everything is very it's only the energy related to that being used by the window it's not the building's energy it's not saving 66 percent of your electric bill but it's saving the energy related to that single measure the energy used to heat or cool based on the heat loss calculation that's done by this and we did a couple of cic building uh, banks because uh, cibc want to be green they want to be sustainable uh, they have bank buildings where people are sitting next to the window and they have an electric heater under their desk. So uh, we showed here with red screen how much they would save in a small bank building for the windows that are in Essex or Port Hip Hope or, or some of the branches. Uh, so they could see the energy saving even if they improved the existing win the window even if it was rented, I mean, they may not own the bank building in the shopping center, but they're renting it and they're paying the, the gas and electric bill. And uh, another key area of red screen is that it takes the energy because you're telling it the fossil fuel, you're telling it whether you're using electric heat, and it calculates the greenhouse gas equivalent. And these are the trading cap and trade issues that we're faced with or what we pay when we pay Enbridge gas or Union gas, which is added to our, our, our fossil fuel. So this is important to, to, to reporting companies that report their carbon and clearly under the cap and trade, it will be important to those that want to reduce. And here also what Red Screen allows us to do because it has the weather, it allows us to look at if we added this, what would happen? And if we did it, could we prove that it worked? So we have the ability of measuring 
a, a condo in Toronto that was able to give us permission to get their Toronto hydroelectric bills prior to the installation of Magnetite and the installation of Magnetite and then the results we show all other things being equal same TV same fridge same plug load clearly after the installation this is called a key sum curve when things before it shows you the energy the kilowatt hours are roughly no change and then once magnetite was installed there was a reduction uh, then you can see they actually went up they may have had uh, uh, opened the window or something in september As, when we get into the heating months here's uh, you know october november the second year the year of magnetite clearly showed all other things being equal their toronto hydro bill went down and I think this is about 22% saving from this uh, uh, condominium. Now we're talking about the sound reduction. So in addition to improving your building from an energy point of view, uh, we want to make our buildings quieter. We want to work better. We want to learn better. And so in addition to the lead, there is the wellness rating. And wellness is coming strong. There's a well standard in Canada now. And uh, what I'll show you is the sound reduction of the acrylic panels, which are going into hotels. We, we're doing the Marriott Hotel, where the noise reduction is in many ways more valuable from a productivity point of view, from selling the room than the energy saving. Magnetite sound reduction and the well units. So you can see these are the points that are part of the well rating system and as noted i took out the portions about acoustic comfort that it says interior noise reduction obviously if you have noisy machines and noisy people you won't work and reduce exterior noise in order to enhance social integration learning and satisfaction so clearly we have a magnetite uh, sound solution with thicker acrylic and also energy saving and in order to prove it we took our sound reduction product to NRC Sound Labs, where it was measured in order to provide the architect designing a new federal building or retrofitting an existing federal building that we would be able to perform in reducing the noise that would be coming into, uh, you know, this, um, I think it was a guard station. <laughs> so clearly the tests show at various frequencies, various sound frequencies, the addition of magnetite has sound reduction properties. And I've noted here, the, 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 the test shows the magnetite uh, has about 16 points when it was installed with an airspace of four inches between the glass and magnetite. So the more space you have, the, the sound product is a little different maybe than the energy product, but clearly we, we, we tailor the situation and each one is custom built for the existing window. And I'll show you an example of, of a major uh, sound reduction project. Uh, there is Magnetite Australia, there's Magnetite USA, which is the founding com uh, company, and uh, Magnetite New Zealand. Now we have Magnetite Canada. Here is 363 windows in a major uh, Australian building uh, where they were trying to achieve a, a better score in their Green Star, which is like LEED or Green Globes. And they showed that the air cavity created and the acoustic results by putting on, and then in this case, uh, their, uh, their acrylic uh, panel, their acrylic glazing from Magnetite Australia, they significantly improved their score. And we were looking at lead and for operating and lead for uh, operations and maintenance, uh, improving scores. And also the race to reduce, or in Durham's case, the, uh, you know, the carbon efforts and the Durham sustainability efforts. So clearly we have lots of windows. Here's an example where you can still see out the window. It's an interior uh, application to the existing building. Uh, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't insulate your walls if you can or put insulation in your roof, but this is the area of windows where it does energy and sound. Uh, these are the benefits that I owe, you know, they were remove drafts, they eliminate condensation. When you don't have the ice and the condensation building on the interior of your window, mold does not grow. 
and we have pictures of, of buildings with single grain, uh, single pane aluminum that just has mold all around the windows and it's unhealthy and it, it doesn't save energy. Um, so these are the properties of magnetite and obviously you can visit our site and we can model any building that uh, any of the people on the call have. Uh, we can take the size of your windows, we can take where you are, we can put it into red screen, we can see what the energy savings are, we can tell you roughly what the costs are. Uh, that's the magnetite portion. Uh, obviously, we, we, we also have people who say, just get me new windows because these are not structurally sound. So we don't want to put something good on something that isn't going to work. Uh, the technology, as I pointed out, it's basically adding an interior on the space we have based on the window jam that we can put in to facilitate um, uh, adding our magnetic uh, panel to it. And if you have uh, cranks or other window operable issues, we can go on the interior of the glass only, or we can go right to the jam. So we custom do shape and size. The utilities are able to provide funding. Uh, we've had Oshawa Hydro call us. We've had a number of people who are electrically heated saying, you know, we don't have money for new windows. We're paying for electric heat, even with our 25% electric reduction recently, it's still losing energy and electric heat is still costly compared to gas. Um, there is an incentive when you improve the building envelope in the IESO, which is, uh, you know, Viridian or Oshawa Hydro or any of the LDCs at Toronto Hydro, as I showed the 22% saving and we can model it. And so there may be incentives, especially if we do large buildings. The gas utilities, and I've spoken to Enbridge and other people, uh, they do give money for insulation. They're looking at equipment. Uh, they're now looking at, you know, this as an insulator, not a new window, because uh, they don't give money to buy new windows, but they do give money for insulation. So we're working with them to see how this might fit in the in the uh, improvement uh, there is the energy service companies so many of the companies the escos are doing many of the public sector buildings uh, the, the the hospitals uh, baycrest and, and other places where the energy service companies are literally taking the investment risk to improve the existing building pay the utility bills and to get paid from the energy savings and we've spoken to many of them who told us that, well, we'll just buy them a better, bigger boiler or we'll just buy them a better chiller and, you know, we'll just cock the windows. Well, now they are realizing that people don't want a bigger boiler with more greenhouse gas uh, burning. And so now magnetite is specified as one of the options uh, based on the, uh, on the information that we're sharing with you and, and we're sharing with the energy service companies and, and also the engineering companies that are responsible for retrofitting existing buildings. We now have a climate action plan and it's all about fossil fuels. And so clearly, although natural gas is relatively cheap now, relative to electric heat, it is a greenhouse gas and it will um, be reduced by uh, improving your windows, improving your doors, improving your building envelope. Large emitters, and these include universities, uh, probably General Motors, all the major uh, steel and, and cement places, they are under a cap and trade. They have a cap of, you know, 70,000 uh, greenhouse gas reductions in this year, it'll be 65,000. So every one of those companies uh, whether they're manufacturers who have warehouses where the wind, the energy is going out the, the single pane glass windows that are, you know, in their warehouse. So whether they improve their greenhouse gas reduction efforts with their product or with their efforts of what they're doing, whether it's a hospital, they have an opportunity to reduce their greenhouse gas by improving their windows. And now the, the benefit is they will not have to go to the greenhouse gas market and buy credits when the investment in their own building would allow them to stay under the uh, cap. 
I mentioned global corporations like General Motors and, and Johnson Johnson, where I used to work, and, and other companies. They are publicly traded. They have been reporting their carbon uh, to be recognized as environmental and sustainable companies, irrespective of, of you know what the U.S. are doing or what COP21 is uh, in or out. And clearly, carbon reduction has major movements. The, C40, the, the, the climate 40 cities, all are reporting their carbon. And one of the areas is reducing the greenhouse gases is from less fossil fuel for heating. I'm working with the Ontario Smart Grid Forum as a corporate partner, and we're working on what are all the other innovations, whether it's nanotechnology, whether it's, uh, we may have windows now that will make electricity uh, built in photovoltaics. So there's not one option. The one to do is to look at what you're spending now, what energy is used in the months that are related to the weather, as opposed to the plug load for your computers and your lights. And then that's the energy that we can help you save uh, with measures like insulating your walls, insulating your roof, and improving your existing buildings. We also block out UV rays, that is key to keeping uh, furniture from uh, fading, etc., which uh, is in the acrylic panel. We reduce noise, we have energy efficiency, we go green, and we seal out drafts and links. Uh, we have CSA tests. Um, I'm doing the energy modeling for Magnetite, and as I do for other products, and clearly uh, we're open to uh, questions and to review any of these details and to, um, uh, you know, continue to support Durham sustainability at the events that we've attended. Thanks. My contact information, uh, you can write me here uh, or visit Magnetite site and I will help you in any of these um, uh, opportunities. Thank you, David. Um, so I've opened it up for questions. You should see a little hand come up on your screen that you can touch, and that will let us know that you would like your line opened for a question. Um, and as we wait for questions to come in, uh, some of the things that David talked about today, one of the tools that is included in membership with our program is a greenhouse gas inventory tool. Um, and that really gives you a very clear picture of where your, your greenhouse gases are coming from, where your emissions are coming from, the cost of those emissions, and really allows you to be able to target areas for reduction and what the cost savings associated with that is. So it's a really nice tie-in with products like these, um, so you can see where you want to focus your effort, your time, and your investment. So do we have any questions out there in the group? In the, uh, do you hear me? Uh, yep. I see that Teresa wrote something, and uh, I just want to add something about ASHRAE audits. I see it in the chat box, if I may. Yep. So clearly, we also have done patio doors, uh, amazing results, because we can create a sliding and operable panel similar to the doors. And we have apartments that are just you know, door to ceiling, uh, people like their patio doors. <laughs> and yet that is a major area of heat loss. And so, uh, you know, yeah, level one. Um, ASHRAE clearly, ASHRAE, the, the Heating Refrigeration uh, Air Conditioning Association, clearly is focusing now on building envelope and in terms of the issue of uh, you know commissioning or whatever, we know we have to prove the savings. And that's why we're taking a product that's been tested in the lab and applying it to an existing product and then showing this is the improvement you get and this is the energy that you might save. This is why the ESCOs are looking at it now. So I'm just an answer to uh, Teresa's question about um, windows. Also, public housing. I thought I saw something about public housing, and I've been doing. Ontario has built massive amounts of electrically heated public housing. I mean, I worked with Ontario Hydro, so it was live electrically. And those are the many buildings that now, given whether it's Rian or, or 
Electra or, or Oshawa Hydro, we can go back to and improve the existing electric building. In the interest of financing, in the city of Toronto, literally they are giving the rental people low interest loans of up to 20 years at two and a half and three and a half percent, depending on what measures you do for deep retrofits, of which this will be one of the measures. And in terms of financing for anybody on the call, Magnetite has a financing tool that allows you to see that you don't have to pay for it up front. It can be financed. I'll just add that. Thanks. Thanks, David. So I'm not seeing any questions come through. Um, so I do want to thank you all for attending this morning. And as I mentioned, the, the recording of this webcast will go out to you later on this afternoon as well as our contact information and David's contact information. So if you do have follow-up questions, feel free to send those out to us and we will make sure that they're addressed. I do see a question potentially coming in now from Tyler. We'll give him a second. So as we're waiting for that to come in, yeah, so everything will, will be sent to you this afternoon and. You can always contact uh, DSA or um, Magnetite directly if you do have any questions. And Tyler is asking, how do you make this financially viable when residents pay hydro or other utilities? Well, the uh, the hydro is a perfect example. The 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 payback uh, on an electric building is much quicker than when we go to a fossil fuel, when we go to a gas-fired building, because electric heat is two or three times the expense of uh, gas. So clearly, the financial viability at our price is much less than a new window. We have windows that are going in at $70, $80, $90 dollars a square foot, and we're $25, I think Magnetite's website says for, you know, the starting price of $25 a square foot. And the more we, we do of the same window, we, we even lower the price because we're making the same uh, panel over and over again. So we're uh, available to finance it, to show the payback. Uh, Tyler, if you have a building, we could model and we can show you how it's financially viable from an energy point of view, from a comfort point of view. I will say we've had people that say, I really... I like the energy saving, but I live near the GO train and I don't hear it anymore. And I and many people are buying this for the sound reduction and the energy is a bonus. Thank you, Dave. Any other questions quickly before we let everyone get back to their day? Um, so I think that's all for now. Uh, I will send out everything this afternoon. So if there is anything else that does come up, feel free to reach out to us. Thank you all for attending and have a great afternoon. Thank you.